Hello ladies and gentlemen, as many of you know, I've been waiting to do this list for a long time. I've really been looking forward to making it. As of the start of this year, I've just really fucking gotten into movies. I love them, just they make me think, and make me feel, they fucking entertain me. Big dumb stupid action movies, uh, quiet dramas, I love it all. I mean, this is the only kind of movie I don't like is cheesy Nicholas Sparks romantic comedy adaptations. Luckily I didn't really see any of those this year. Anyway. Enough of the going on about random shit. I'm just going to try and get straight into this. I don't want to make it too long. I'm just going to try and put you guys out of your misery. Short and sweet. But, of course, I've got to do some honourable mentions. Because, uh, the, with the ten that I've got, I mean, there's still others that I think deserve a mention. Now, I saw 60 movies this year. And I think that's pretty good for someone who's not an actual critic. Someone who doesn't get to go to all these free screenings. And because my cinema's a piece of shit, I have to go and seek out all these movies myself. Like, I, I have to download some online. I know it's illegal, but I, there's just some movies that I really want to see. And I have no other way of getting to them. Sometimes I've had to travel four hours out of town. Like, I'll, if we go out of town, I'll see as many movies as I can because I just try to see them all. But I saw 60 this year, so that's a really great amount to choose from. And I saw so many good ones. I try to stay away from ones that were generally perceived as really bad because I want to focus on the good. And I want to apologise if you hear any back background noise because my sister will not shut the fuck up. Alright, let's get on to the honourable mentions. I've got six honourable mentions. I was going to have five, but the last one I really think I really need to talk about Pacific Rim. Uh, Pacific Rim, this is the only movie on this list actually that I reviewed. All these other ones I haven't gotten around to reviewing, so uh, I'll catch up on new movies next year. But uh, Pacific Rim, there's not really much to say. I I loved it so much that I bought this DVD special edition. It's a Jaeger statue. DVD for it. Like, it's so fucking cool. And that, basically, it's giant robots fighting giant monsters. It is pure childhood awesomeness. And that's enough said, really. The next honorable mention isn't that much of a well known movie. It's called Europa Report. It's about these space uh, people. It didn't work that well. These space scientists, they go on a mission to Jupiter to try and find evidence of life. And. If you like your science fiction with your science, check this movie out. I mean, I liked it so much more than I thought I was going to. I think I'm the only one that genuinely loved this movie. I thought it was excellent. It was well paced. It was tense. It had great horror elements. Great. It, it felt realistic. Um, despite the ending not being that, not really living up to the rest of the movie, I still thoroughly enjoyed it, and I can't wait to see it again. My third honourable mention is Fruitvale Station. Now I didn't get to see this until about a week ago because you know I couldn't find it anywhere, and I was really glad I did. I loved this movie. It had a really slow build up, but it was powerful. It was about the true story of Oscar Grant who got killed by bark cops, like basically wrongfully shot, and the lead up was us getting to know him in living the days before his death and then when we actually witness the murder happen it is chilling it is heartbreaking and it is fucking powerful it got me interested i was reading up on all of it and it's just a great look at the in police injustice really and what happened and got to know the man behind the crime not behind the crime the victim behind the crime and it was a great and powerful movie though not one i think i could watch again next honorable we'll mention the best horror movie of the year goes to the Conjuring. Had to buy this. I watch it at night. You have to watch it at night. And this is one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. Some people didn't think it was scary, but I'm a pussy and I thought it was great. It was pure old school, tense, haunted house awesomeness. It didn't rely on cheap jump scares and other gimmicks like that. It was genuinely creepy throughout. And it's now one of my favourite horror movies of all time. Not that I watch many, but I'm starting to get into them. And I can't wait to see what James Wan does next. Um, except that it's Fast and Furious 7, but uh, I can't wait because I think they're building a sequel to The Conjuring and I can't wait to see where they go with it. My fifth honourable mention is The Spectacular Now. This is another one that I saw very recently and you know, I'm a sucker for these coming of age movies and this one was no different. I loved it. It was a look at the blossoming relationship between Mars Teller, the 
actor Marcelo, who's the cool kid. He's the life of the party and everything. He meets up with the good girl, the nice girl, played by Shailene Woodley, who, in my opinion, is one of the best performances of the year. I mean, I think she does deserve an Oscar nomination. <laughs> Not that she will get one, but same with In the Descendants. She deserved a nomination for that, and she didn't get one, so she's just getting fucking snubbed. But I think this movie was great. Even Miles Teller, who was obnoxious in 21 and over, was great here. He did a great job at portraying the little dramas that his character had. And this movie was just, it was great fun, it felt good, and it felt bad at the same time. It took twists and turns that I didn't see coming. And if you like little human stories like this, check out Spectacular Now. Now my last honourable mention, I'm going to continue hitting you with the coming of ages. This is the way, way back. I saw this movie right before I saw The World's End. And let me tell you, I was so excited for The World's End. And The World's End had a hard act to follow with this. Because this knocked me out of the water. It was, I loved it. I loved it so much more than I let, was led to believe I was going to like it. It felt so good. The ending was just, you're like, yes, I'm so glad that happened. It's about Duncan, he's an awkward kid. He but basically doesn't really have any friends. He just sits around at home and they're at his stepdad's summer home and basically he goes out and makes friends with the owner of the water park, Sam Rockwell. And it just shows the stuff they do. He gets a job at the water park and he's just sort of coming out of his shell and starting to have fun. And it's just a look at his life, really, and it is really, it is hilarious. It's written by the award-winning writers of The Descendants, and you can see why this movie had a great script, and it was brilliant that good. Sam Rockwell stole every scene he was in, that's why I love the way we're back. Okay, let's get into the list. These were the ten movies that I just absolutely loved for the year. I want to watch them again and again, these movies. I consider to be just great. <laughs> a lot of them are going to become my favourites of all time. Some of them. Among my favorites. Let's not, let's not get ahead of ourselves, but 2013 was a great year for movies, so let's get started with number 10. Now I'm going to continue hitting you with the coming of age movies, because you know I love them. Number 10 is a real small one. Uh, this movie is The Kings of Summer, and I love this movie. It stars Gabriel Basso, I can't remember the other guy's name, and Moises Ares. Or hey, you may remember him as the, the kid Rico from the Hannah Montana show, but let me tell you, that kid is fucking hilarious here, and I'll get to that. The Kings of Summer is about these two kids, and they're sick of their lives, they're sick of their parents, they're sick of all the rules, they want to become men. So they, along with the, the, their eccentric friend Biagio, played by Moises Ares, who is hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. They decide to build a shack in the woods and just sort of live off the land. And the movie just showcases uh, what they do, how they live out there, the dramas they go through, uh, what goes, through, what their parents go through trying to find them. And this movie honestly took me by surprise. It was really, it was really poignant at times. It was really powerful in the drama. Like it, it handled, it handled everything really well. But let me tell you, this movie was. Fucking hilarious. The jo the jokes weren't didn't come that often, but when they were, they were rip roaringly hilarious. Biagio, played by Moises Ares, is one of the best characters of the year and probably the funniest. This everything that came out of this kid's mouth was pure gold. Uh, just go watch the movie. Go watch The Kings of Summer. You won't regret it. It's a great little movie, and I think it des deserves more love than it's been given. Just watch it for Moises Ares as Biagio. Seriously, that kid is worth the whole movie. And the movie is damn good in itself. Now, I must say that I am really enjoying the Maconnaissance. Now, I didn't see Dallas Buyers Club, and sadly, I didn't get to see The Wolf of Wall Street. But, here we are with number nine, Mud. This movie was excellent. I'm so glad that I seeked it out. I saw this back in May or whatever, and at the time, it was one of the only movies that I really, really liked. Because the, the year had a slow start, and I thought it was going to be tough to knock this one out. But so many great movies came, but this one held in my top ten, and it's great. Matthew McConaughey gave one of the best performances of the year and of his career. The kids, the kids were excellent. Ty Sheridan, for someone so young, he played it so well. The kids were portrayed so well. They didn't feel like a movie kids. They felt like real kids. They swore and talked about tits and everything. It, it felt so real. And the, the movie is about these two kids and they meet this kind of weird guy called Mud living on an island. And they, they end up helping him out in exchange for this boat that he's been living in. And they befriend him, and it's about 
his relationship with uh, Juniper, who played by Reese, with Reese Witherspoon, and him trying to get back together with her. And it's about the kids losing their innocence and learning more about life and everything. And it's kind of, it's kind of like a Tom Sawyer story meets Stand By Me. And yeah, I know the comparisons to Stand By Me rolling in, and I don't think it's as good as Stand By Me, but I can see the comparisons. It's a really great little movie, powerful, smart, well written. I can't wait to see what Jeff Nichols does next, and I can't wait to see what Matthew McConaughey does next, because that dude, man, is reviving his career so well. Number 8 is another one that I saw only a few days ago along with the next movie I'm going to talk about. I saw it a few days ago, I was out of town, I kept caught at the cinema. It, it didn't look like the movie I was going to go to, but boy did this take me by surprise. Number 8 is Philomena, starring Judy Dench and Steve Coogan. And this is based on a true story, and I thought this movie was just beautiful. I guess you could say it's an old person movie. When I went, I saw this in the theatre, and... I was the youngest person there by about 40 years, and that's no exaggeration. I got weird looks from all the old, old folks. I half expected someone to come up to me and say, aren't you meant to be seeing The Hobbit? Aren't you meant to be seeing Thor 2? No, Philomena was fucking excellent. And for a movie with such dark subject matter, it was really funny. It had some great comedic moments. Judy Dench was hilarious as the titular character. She plays Philomena Lee, the true story of a woman who back in the 1950s, she had a child out of wedlock and the church basically took her baby away, sold it to Americans. And now, 50 years later, she's just let the secret out because she kept it to herself because she didn't want to... You know, because she felt ashamed that she had sinned, which is fucking bullshit. But she enlists the help of Steve Coogan, a reporter, to help her find her son now. And he doesn't give a shit about it at first. But as they get together, as they get to know each other more, he starts to care about her and care about the story more. And gets more passionate about helping her find her son. Because she's really nice, she doesn't defend herself, she still forgives the church and everything, so she's not going to pipe up and have a go at them like Steve Coogan will for her. He plays Martin Sixsmith, I think his name is, but this movie's bad. You find out what hap you find out the big reveal about halfway through, and the movie doesn't lose anything. It keeps going, you keep just going through, she finds out more about her son and everything, and it's just great. This movie is beautiful, it's so well done. It could have become a mushy, sentimental mess if it was done by a worse director, but Stephen Frears did a great job of keeping it upbeat and light. It didn't become a soppy, you know, a soppy, mushy mess, like kind, kind of like Saving Mr. Banks was. Well, I did like that movie, it was a bit, yeah, it was a bit mushy. But Philomena was great, completely took my, me by surprise. I really want to watch it again. Judy Dench for Best Actress, that's all I'm going to say. Judy Dench for Best Fucking Actress. <laughs> Number seven now. This was probably my most anticipated movie of the year. I honestly thought it was going to be the best movie of the year, so I guess you could say it let me down in that respect, but American Hustle more than lives up to the hype. I was so pumped for this. I saw it the day before I saw Philomena. I saw it in the theatre. I was just I was bursting with excitement before I saw it, saw it, and it did not disappoint. American Hustle is awesome. Probably one of the most fun movies I've seen ever, really. It is so much fun. It's loosely based on the Afghan operation of the 70s in uh, New Jersey. About Basically it stars Christian Bale as Irving Rosenfeld, who's a con man, and he and his partner in crime, Amy Adams, uh, Sydney, Amy Adams, character named Sidney Prosser, uh, they get caught by Bradley Cooper, play, who plays Richie DeMarceau, an FBI agent. And they end up working with him to try and bring down these corrupt politicians and stuff. Then you've got Jennifer Lawrence as, uh, Jennifer Lawrence as, uh, Irving's wife. You've got Jeremy Renner playing the mayor. You've got... This movie has a stacked cast. I mean, even the supporting actors. You've got Louis C.K. playing Bradley Cooper's supervisor, who is absolutely hilarious. Best ensemble cast of the year. The acting in this movie is top notch. Amy Adams is the best I've ever seen her. Christian Bale is unrecognisable as Irving. Bradley Cooper is great as usual. Jennifer Lawrence is Oscar worthy again. Like, she probably won't win considering she just won Best Actress for Silver Linings Playbook, but I honestly think she's well deserving of a, a, at least a nomination for Best Supporting Actress because she was great in this as well. I love Jennifer Lawrence. 
But this movie, man, is so much fun. It is so well done. It's more serious than I thought it would be, and I like that. There are some genuinely dramatic moments that are great. <laughs> it works as everything. It works as a drama. It works as a comedy. This movie is hilarious. More in the last half of the movie, there was like there were things that had the whole theater erupting in laughter. I loved American Hustle. It wasn't as great as I thought it would be, but it still stands as one of the best movies of the year. It just suffers from having way too much hype, but this movie still deserves to be checked out. Not as good as David Russell's last ever at the Silver Linings Playbook, but I still can't wait to see what he does next. Number six is probably the only action movie you'll find this high up on my list. And I'm talking about Captain Phillips. Man, was this movie adrenaline pumping. Tom Hanks plays Richard Phillips. This is the true story of a captain who get, whose ship gets taken over by Somalian pirates. Their crew has to sort of survive and they, they're kind of trying to trick the pirates and everything, but it is just exhilarating. We get a look at the pirates. I love that it doesn't paint us a perfect picture of them being bad guys, you know, just bad pirates come on. We get to see where they're coming from and the, they don't want to be there just as much as the ship team. The ship crew don't want to be there. The pirates have to do this, they have to make their living because they live in a fucking poor Somalia. So, it's a really great movie. It's exhilarating. When they take over the boat, you can feel the tension in the air. I hate to use the cliche saying, but you could cut it with a fucking knife. This movie was so much fun to watch. You, you went through it. You see Tom Hanks go through so many different emotions and everything when he's with the pirates alone. He, you know, he even starts to kind of identify with some of them. And the last scene, man, the last scene in this movie is a testament to Tom Hanks' acting abilities because that man, this is one of the best performances I've ever seen him give and I think that he's deserving of winning Best Actor this year. So, come on, give it to him. I know he's, he's already got like, I don't know, two or three or whatever, but he deserves it for this movie. Thank you, Tom Hanks, you can act. Thank you, Paul Greengrass, for directing an action movie that isn't shit and riddled with plot holes and cliches. Captain Phillips, you are awesome. Yeah, this was the first movie of the year that I gave 10 out of 10 to, and for it to still hang in the top 5, that's amazing, because I love The Place Beyond the Pines. I don't know why so many people didn't like this movie, people thought it was pretentious and too ambitious, but fuck you. Place Beyond the Pines is an epic, and a brilliant epic at that. It is by Derek Sian France, the follow-up feature to his Blue Valentine, which I have not seen, but I bought it two days ago, so I'm going to see it sometime. Place Beyond the Pines follows the story of Ryan Gosling. He is a motorcycle rider. He's a, he's a motorcycle rider for like the carnival and shit, and he's back in town with Eva Mendes, a girl he hooked up with last year, and she has his baby. So he wants to help them out. He wants to help support his child, so he starts robbing banks with uh, a, a guy he meets. And they start robbing banks together, and it just sort of goes out of control from there. And that's as much as I can go into this movie without spoiling. This is almost like three movies in one. It's like three big story chunks. It's really long, but I don't care. I'll sit through it any day. I love this movie so much. Ryan Gosling and Bradley Cooper, great leading men, great performances from both of them. Eva Mendes, even... I. Don't like her a lot of the time, but she's really good in this. Dane DeHaan, who comes in later, he is great. I love Dane DeHaan. He, he is an upcoming actor to watch, let me tell you that. The only weak link to the movie is Emery Cohen. He is shit. But, Close on the Pines is powerful. It is epic. The soundtrack is great. There are some motorbike chase scenes that are just beautifully filmed. And this movie just leaves a feeling of just darkness, and you can just really feel the darkness. It, it, that's what this movie is. It's not a, a light-hearted movie to watch. It's a pure epic drama, and I love this movie so much. Okay, the top four. Here's where the heavy hitters come out. It was so hard for me to separate these movies. I'm not even shitting you. It's taken me until last night to even decide between them. 
I all the, I loved all of them from the moment I saw them, and it's still it's difficult to choose between them. But I found the differences. But these top four are really even for me. But there's not there's got to be a number one. There's got to be a number two. So on and so forth. So let's get on with the list. Number four is Ron Howard's Rush. Rush chronicles the 1970s Formula One rivalry between James Hunt and Nicky Lauda. Played by Chris Hemsworth and Daniel Brühl, respectively. Chris Hemsworth we know as Thor, and Daniel Brühl we know as Frederick Zola from Inglourious Bastards. Anyway, this movie is just perfect. It was the first movie I saw of the year, and just thought, that movie's perfect. There's nothing wrong with that movie. And while I didn't enjoy it as much as the three movies above it, I can still acknowledge that I think this movie was perfect. And I think it deserves a lot more love than it's been given. I mean, yeah, it's been highly praised, but... I think it should be even more highly praised. Rush is great. It really highlights the dangers of Formula One and how passionate these people are about their racing. You know, they kind of fuel each other. They make each other go that much harder for themselves. So even though they're kind of rivals, they they pretty much keep each other going as well. They 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 are always trying to one up each other, and they're so passionate about the game, the sport. And I've I've never cared about Formula 1, I previously did not give two shits about Formula 1, and this movie has made me interested in it, and that's a testament to how, how well this movie was done, so even if you don't give two shreds of a shit about racing like I do, um, go watch Rush, because it is a really interesting story, you get into the inner mechanics of it, it's not just about cars going around the track, it's so much more than that, it's about the dangers, it's about the aerodynamics, how they make the cars and everything, and <laughs> it's a delight. The two actors, they're great. Uh, Hemsworth is so charismatic as Hunt, and Daniel Brawl is really hilarious as Mickey Ladd. Daniel Brawl for Best Supporting Actor. God damn it, he was great. Um, it's pretty much all I have to say to Rush. It was greatly written, it was greatly directed. I mean, seriously, Ron Howard should get some acknowledgement for, being, for his direction, because I thought it was done so well. And the sound, the, the visuals, it just, everything. Everything worked in Rush, and that's why it's number four on my list. Number three was my most anticipated movie of the year. I cannot even describe to you the feeling I had when I first was in the cinema waiting to watch this. I was here with Jaron. We were... We travelled four hours to see this movie, and I've been waiting for it for three years. This movie exceeded my hype. Just put that in perspective, how excited I was, and this movie still exceeded my expectations. And that is a testament to how hilarious and how well these guys, how, how just, how good these guys are. Because number three is The World's End. Best comedy I've seen in a long time, but it's not just a comedy, it's a sci-fi rom, it is insane, it is a nerd's delight. It is so much fun. And it has its it has its more serious moments. It has its dramatic moments that work. But this movie is just so much fun. It's a pure nerdgasm, but it touches on nostalgia and growing up and everything. It's about five childhood friends who who did this epic pub crawl back in the day, having twelve pubs, twelve, 12 pubs, a pint at every pub. There were twelve pubs, and now they're in their forties and they're going to do it again. They go back to their hometown, but they realize. The town isn't what it used to be. It has been taken over by aliens filled with blue stuff. Now, that was stupid. That sounds to you. This movie is awesome. They explain everything really well, how it happened. The action's handled really well. Edgar Wright, uh, I maintain that that guy can do anything. And I really can't wait to see what he does next. And his next project is going to be Ant-Man. The Brits, they are taking over Hollywood. And hopefully it's excellent. And The World's End is... It's the third installment in the unofficial... Cornetto trilogy, the Shaun of the Dead being the first one, which is the zombie movie, which is awesome. Shaun of the Dead being the Red Cornetto, Hot Fuzz, which is my all-time favorite movie, so you can understand my excitement for this. The Hot Fuzz, which is about the cops, the Blue Cornetto, and the World's End, which I don't know why it's a mint Cornetto, but <laughs> oh well. If I had to rank the trilogy, it'd probably go number one, Hot Fuzz, number two, The World's End, number three, Shaun of the Dead. And that's really tightly knit, because they're all fucking excellent, but 
So literally the world's end, I was sweating in the theatre, I was almost crying because of how much I was enjoying it, just the pure epicness of this movie, could not believe how much I enjoyed it. I watched this like every week, I watched it last night, I, I've watched it twice in a day before, this movie just warrants so many repeat viewings, just like the others, you pick up on something every time you watch it, there's so much foreshadowing and little easter eggs in it, it's a delight, and I'm going to continue watching it every week, until I get sick of it, and I don't think that time's gonna come soon. World's End, you are fucking awesome. <music> Lo and behold, the future of cinema. Number two is the best experience I've ever had in a movie theatre. And I saw it three times. I saw it in the cinema three times, and each time, it was marvellous. Of course I'm talking about Gravity. Now, I didn't think anything would come past this movie. It is just a masterpiece. That's all I'm going to say. Gravity is a complete cinematic masterpiece. The story is kept nice and simplistic, but it's still excellent. It's interesting. It is exhilarating. The, the special effects. The, these are probably the best special effects I have ever seen. I felt like I was in space. And that is a testament to the visual skill of Alfonso Cuaron and his special effects team. Because I felt like I was in space with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. This movie is technically really small, and a tiny cast. Basically Sandra Bullock and George Clooney are the only main characters in it. Uh, but really the movie belongs to Sandra Bullock. It's about her fight for survival or being lost in space, trying to get back to Earth. The things she goes through, and it is so brilliant. One of the most realistic space movies I've ever seen. Yeah, I know, they defy physics a few times, but I think you can be give, forgive that. They, the filmmakers even said they, they took some liberties just to make the movie a bit more interesting. And I have no problem with that. I can't explain how great this movie is. You have to see it. Everyone around me, hardly anyone wants to see it. They think it's going to be crap. They're like, oh, it's just a girl floating in space. But... Gravity is so much more than that. It is an action adventure like no other. It is beautiful, it is scary, it's heartbreaking at times, it's everything. And this is one of the best movies I've ever seen, and I think it's going to go down as a classic. Goddamn Gravity. Alfonso Cuaron, don't wait seven years until you make another movie this time. <laughs> Alright, let's get into it. Numero uno. Number one. The movie that I deem to be the best movie of the year. And I'm sure not many people are going to agree with me. And I think this entry is going to surprise a lot of you. Because this movie is getting nowhere near the amount of love that it should be getting. Because my number one favourite movie of 2013 is Prisoners. Starring Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal. Prisoners is... A masterpiece. It's two and a half hours long, and I would watch four and a half hours of this movie. And it sucks because a lot of the a lot of the reasons people are disliking this movie is because of the length. And you know, more of a good thing. You know, I love I loved this movie. The the I'm I'm not saying it's a movie that you enjoy because it is dark. It is by no means easy to watch, but. It made me feel so much. This movie is powerful, it's dark, it's brilliant. Brilliant. Hugh Jackman has given one of the best performances of the year. It's about two families whose young daughters get kidnapped. And that happens right at the start of the movie, so we get straight into it pretty much. It's about the police investigation and how far Hugh Jackman will go to get her back. And it is insane. The feeling I had watching this movie, I was just in awe. I left just so affected. Like, imagine if this happened to you. I mean, I'm 16, I'm not, I don't have kids, but fucking... I, you can feel this is kind of makes you scared out of kids, you know, because this shit happens all the time in real life, and it's kind of just a harrowing look at one of the worst experiences that you can go through. 
and it goes, it, the movie goes through so many twists and turns, and like when you find shit out, it's like, oh, I get it. You, you, when I when you watch the movie again, you see, oh, this ties together with this, this ties together with this, it all ties together. It is an excellent crime mystery movie. It's well acted, well directed by Dennis Denis Denis Villeneuve, or however you pronounce it. He he was uh, the director of On Sunday, which I have not seen. And he also directed another movie this year, which I didn't see, but <laughs> Prisoners is the best movie of the year, and one of the best movies I have ever seen. It is so powerful. The Everything about it is just perfect. It's raining so much in the movie, just to accentuate the darkness, the tone of it. It is... I can't even... Like, I'm just freezing up, because I can't find the right words to describe Prisoners. The best... And that's kind of the best praise I can give. But the best thing I can tell you about this movie is go and watch it. Don't assume that it's going to be boring and shitty because it's not. It is so much more than that. Prisoners is the best movie of the year and I stand by that. Go see Prisoners. So, that's my list. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments what were your favourite movies of the year. What were your least favourite movies of the year? I might do a bit of a worst list, but like I said, I tried to stay away from bad movies, so it'll probably be a bit of a shorter list, but anyway, thanks for watching me talk about movies, because I really love them, and I know I probably didn't word a lot of this as well as I should have, but this is just my passion, I'm, I love this, and I love those movies, and I plan to watch them again and again and again and again, I, and I recommend all of them, I recommend you guys to watch all of these, and... <sighs> That's it pretty much. Just thanks for watching. Have a good night. Have a good day. Have a good morrow, gentlemen. Goodbye.